Hi, in this video we're going to get Doubler 2 set up with FL Studio. So Doubler 2 is a standalone piece of software that FL will see as an external MIDI controller. So to get started, first make sure that the Doubler app is open, and after that follow the steps in the app to calibrate your mic and audio output, and then you can head into a profile. Before we actually go into FL Studio, the first thing we're going to do in a profile is turn off the inbuilt audio. And this will mean we're not going to hear Doubler's inbuilt synths and we're only going to hear the synths and sounds within FL Studio. But once that's done, make sure to leave the Doubler app open and then we can head over into FL. So first of all, we want to go to Options and then MIDI Settings. In here, in the Inputs list, you should see Doubler 2 and make sure that it's enabled. Also, make sure to put Doubler 2 on the port. So I put this on port 1 so that we can split the MIDI channels later on as well. After you've got Doubler 2 set as a MIDI input, we can then head to the Audio tab. In the Audio tab, we can set the usual output we want to use, and we can also set our buffer size. So it's really important here that our buffer size is set to 1 to 8 samples or below in order to reduce any latency. If you're on Windows, you'll need to make sure you're using an ASIO driver. So if you don't have an audio interface that comes with its own drivers, you'll need to use ASIO for all. But we have a separate video over on our Learn Doubler page if you need some guidance on setting up ASIO for all. But once you have your audio output set and your buffer size at 1 to 8 samples, we can now close the preferences. So now all our preferences are sorted, let's take a look at how to control some sounds in FL. So we'll first take a look at controlling drums or samples. So before we do that, we first need to set up a few triggers in Doubler. So triggers are what we use to train percussive input sounds and then assign these to samples in FL Studio later. If you need, we have an in-depth guide on how to train triggers in a separate video, but I'm just going to quickly add a few now. head back to the play tab and now we've got these triggers we can head back into FL Studio. So by default you'll see that a channel rack normally has different drum sounds on different channels but we want to control a full drum rack using the triggers so we'll want to set up a channel that uses FPC or another similar sampler so you can find FPC in the drum section and you can see in here we have multiple samples all loaded up and if you want to use your own samples you can uh, open up a blank pad and drop those in but I can now use these triggers I've just trained to control the sounds in here. In the channel rack, we can also lock a channel to receive information from a certain MIDI channel in Doubler. So if you right click on the channel, go to receive notes from, and then Doubler 2, and in here we can select the channel. So by default, Doubler sends out um, pitch information, so that's singing on MIDI channel 1, and it sends out the triggers, so that's the beatboxing and percussive sounds on MIDI channel 10. So if I wanted, I could lock this to just MIDI channel 10. So that's how to control drums or samples, but now let's take a look at controlling pitch instruments with singing. So to control a pitch instrument, you can add a plugin or synth of your choice. I've just got Flex loaded up here with a preset. And then let's go to Doubler 2 and check that we're in a key lock. So I'm in C major here. We have a few different ways to find the right key for your idea, but it's really important to make sure you're in a key lock and to sing clearly and confidently when using Doubler. And we have a separate video that goes through some tips on using pitch if you need, but I can see that the pitch is on. I'm in a key lock and I've got the track armed here. And I'm actually going to also change the MIDI channel like I did with the drum rack. So we can go to receive notes from Doubler 2. And this time, as I'm controlling this with pitch information, I'm going to select MIDI channel 1. And now I can simply sing or hum a melody. Da, 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 da. So there are two ways you can record your ideas with Doubler in FL Studio. So the first is just recording a live take with Doubler, using it as a real-time MIDI input on your chosen track. So if I make sure I have the record armed on up here and I press play, I can sing in my melody. Da, 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 da. And then there we have the MIDI information, and you can see that on the piano roll and in the channel rack. And this will apply for both triggers and pitch and singing. But then another way is also to use the MIDI capture plugin. So MIDI Capture is a plugin that reflects any settings that you have in the Doubler app and applies a cleaning algorithm to your clip after you finish recording. So this can help save time editing the MIDI information like you might have to do when recording a live take if you accidentally hit a wrong note or did something that was unintended. To use MIDI Capture, let's first add it to a separate track. So I'm going to go here and go to Insert, go to More Plugins, 
and then we'll see Dublin MIDI capture listed here it will be a VST3. Now if we click and add it, you'll see that the MIDI capture here reflects the settings we have in the Dublin app, so it's got the key lock we're in which is C major. And to record using MIDI capture I can simply hit the spacebar to start FL's transport and sing the melody in. I can also hear the, any instrument I want in real time still, so if I want to hear the synth whilst I'm recording, I can make sure this is armed here. But when I hit spacebar, we'll see it recording within the plugin. Da, 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 da. So once you're finished, you just hit spacebar again to stop recording, but then the cleaning algorithm is applied, and you can click and drag this clip to any track you like. So I can put this onto this track instead. So finally, let's take a look at controlling effects and parameters with Doubler in FL Studio. So in the Doubler app in the Play tab, you'll see on the right-hand side we have four control dials, which are mapped to the vowels E, R, U, and the fourth one is the envelope or intensity of your voice. Each of these dials can be mapped to any MIDI mappable parameter within FL, and each of them also have a CC number allocated to them, which can be changed in the Assign tab if you want. So let's take a look if we want to use an RVAL, for example, to control a parameter on our synth. So let's open Flex here and say we want to control the cutoff here on our synth. To do this, I can simply right click, select Link to Controller, and then in here, uh, we want to make sure the Auto Detect is on. Let's set the port to 1, which is what we had our, the Doubler MIDI input set to in our preferences. And then in the Assign tab, select map next to the vowel we want to use, so I'm going to select the R vowel, and now back in FL Studio they should be linked, so as I move from an E to an R, this will move. E -ya -ya -ya. E -ya -ya -ya. So that's how to get started with using Doubler in FL Studio. If you want to find out more, check out the Learn Doubler page over on our website.